To make a broadcast application in this field, we're going to use a handheld boom sprayer. Using that single nozzle wand we talked about earlier, uh, it would take forever and you'd probably miss some spots and probably over apply in some other spots. So this boom has six nozzles on it and they're uh, on a 20 inch spacing. And what that gives you is 10 feet of coverage. Now, uh, you get that value by multiplying number of nozzles by inches of spacing. Six times 20 inches is 120 inches or 10 feet. Uh, the boom itself is not 10 feet long. Uh, that's because these nozzles spray in a triangle pattern. These are called flat fan nozzles. They spray in a triangle, and so the triangles at the end reach out beyond the end of the boom, giving you a full 10 feet of coverage. Now, and these particular nozzles are 11002 nozzles. Uh, 110 meaning the angle of spray being 110 degrees, the O2 being 0.2 gallons per minute. Uh, one of the indications on that, that this is an O2 nozzle is that they're yellow. The red nozzle that we used in the spot treatment was an O4 nozzle or 0.4 gallons of water per minute. Uh, these are O2s and that is at 40 psi as they come from the factory, but it's always important to make sure that we, re that we calibrate those nozzles in the field because as you know, once you use them, they're never exactly as they were from the uh, factory. So what we're going to do now is it's important that we take uh, volume from each of these nozzles because if one of these nozzles is not spraying or spraying too much, we'll either get an over or under application. So Guy is going to be uh, uh, spraying here. We're going to get, gather the uh, volume for 15 seconds. So we'll do that now. Three, two, one. Go. One hundred and forty mils. One hundred and forty eight mils. One hundred and forty two mils. And one hundred and forty seven or one hundred and forty eight mils. A real common range of uh, spray volumes for a handheld broadcast application uh, would be something in the range of 15 to 30 gallons per acre. I often go uh, for something around 20 gallons per acre, and that's what we're going to calibrate for right now is 20 gallons per acre. Okay, now the, the, the acre that I'm going to be spraying, what I'm going to pretend to spray, is going to be 10 feet wide, uh, which is the uh, swath, swath width of my boom. and an acre is 43,560 square feet. So the acre I will spray is 4,356 feet long by 10 feet wide. And so it sounds like what I need to do is walk 4,356 feet in 22 minutes. Does that sound right? Yes, it does. Okay, I know of two different ways to calibrate uh, the pace of your walking application. One is to one is to measure out a known distance and practice walking it until you have the right speed. Another way is if you know the exact length of your average footstep, uh, to use a metronome uh, to time yourself uh, walking, uh, walking any length. If I need to walk 200 feet in one minute, one minute, then I need to take 80 steps every minute, and that 80 steps times two and a half feet will give me 200 feet in one minute. So I'm going to set this metronome for um, 80 beats per minute. And if I stay on that metronome, I'll be, I'll be, um, I'll be going 200 feet per minute and putting out 20 gallons per acre. Because Guy knows his pace, it doesn't really matter how long it is. We know the width at 10 feet because Guy is using a metronome and he knows that at each step he's putting out two and a half feet, the distance he's walking really doesn't matter. We go totally by the time. It's also very important that at any time you do calibration on uh, ground like this that you do it in the situation you're going to be spraying and not on the road because it, it's certain that the conditions out here will be different than a nice flat road and your calibration may be off. 
To ensure that you do not skip an area or overlap in your application, it's often helpful to flag the area that you're going to spray. Flags can be put out at a width that might be equal to the width of the boom or even twice the width of the boom. This can make sure that you don't treat at a diagonal which will overlap your treatment area or skip an area which will result in misapplication. So when I uh, cross the field and uh, cross the flag line, I'll pull out the flag to, my, uh, uh, to the side that I've already treated. I'll pull out the flag and toss it down so that I don't treat that stripe again. Otherwise, I might get disoriented and start doing diagonals um, across different rows. Now we're going to scale up to a 30-foot boom sprayer pulled by an ATV, and it's going to be operated by Ernie Roncaroni, also of the UC Davis Weed Science Group. One difference in calibrating an ATV sprayer is instead of starting by looking at the pressure, we're going to start by measuring the speed of the, of the sprayer in the field. Because every, every uh, field is a little bit different, you may have to set up an ATV sprayer slightly differently in each, each kind of terrain. First, we're going to measure out uh, 176 feet across the field. And it's, uh, the reason we choose that number is because 88 feet per minute uh, is the same as one mile per hour. 176 feet is 2 times 88. So if you, go, if you do 176 feet in two minutes, that's the same as one mile per hour. And so it's easy to multiply up or down to figure out your miles per hour uh, when uh, calibrating the ATV sprayer. Next, uh, Ernie will uh, run up and down between those uh, two flags. We're going to stopwatch time him a couple of times to figure out his exact speed, and we'll use that doing the calibrations uh, in a few minutes. If the ATV goes across the field too fast and it's bumpy terrain, you can get kind of a wing flapping effect where uh, one of the booms drops close to the ground and then raises high off the ground again, and that will affect the uh, spray pattern you get. Once we determine a um, a good speed for this field and this, uh, and this ATV. We're going to pressurize the system and measure the output from each nozzle and from there we'll be able to figure out how many gallons per acre we're going to apply and how much chemical to put into the spray tank. Go! We're going to go through and measure the output of every single nozzle, just in case uh, any of them are plugged, we'll find out now instead of after the application. If a nozzle is plugged, that means it won't be putting out as much chemical as the other nozzles, and you might end up with a skip stripe across the field. The main difficulty in putting out an application with ATV equipment is maintaining a steady speed. After you've taken all these steps and you know your numbers, then you're ready to make an ATV application.